Okay, this one's actually on a Drake L4 or actually a L7 power supply. There is no difference between a Drake L4B and a Drake L7 power supply. The L7 is just a, a updated version of the Drake L4B and the deck is um, you know prettier and got 160 meters but the um, L7 deck is not as robust as the old Drake L4B. Um, Drake went a little bit cheaper with the uh, L7. The main thing on the deck is uh, Drake didn't use um, a blower and chimneys with forced air on the 500Zs. They went with just a uh, box fan. But anyway, on the power supply, which we're doing today, the uh, power supply for the Drake L4 and the L7 are exactly the same thing. And it's, as you can see, that's a Drake L7 power supply. Um, with it skirt off and pulled up, I'm um, seeing some insides, a little bit of amp porn. Um, this has been modded original transformer uh, fits in the power supply two-piece amp and this here is an original transformer for a heat kit SB220 so I just wanted to yeah, put there there from sides they both use a voltage doubler circuit and they're both near the same volts it's just you can see you know the um, heat kit and then the uh, Drake the uh, Drake is um, it's about 20% bigger and just more robust and it'll handle more current than the uh, heat kit one of the reasons the Drake L4B is uh, much better and sturdier or more robust amp than you know a lot of other um, 500Z amps like the heat kit SB220 or should I say especially the he kid SB220. Um, this has a Nomad high voltage cap PC board in it. He had to do uh, quite a few mods to get the Nomad board to work in it. Um, it doesn't fit exactly. He had to do some mods to get it to fit. Um, the Nomad board comes with the uh, diodes on it too, and I ended up having to cut the uh, diodes off but there's a reason for that too to get it to fit and um, it's got modern snap-in caps uh, the Nomad board will take up to eight um, caps but since this amp doesn't run on super high voltage for a 3500Z it just runs I believe 2650 which is not high for 500 Z's you know some people are running up to 4,000 but anyway at 2650 with the um, Drake L7 here only needed eight of the caps and as you can see one cap is not installed there um, with eight um, 450 volt caps that would be uh, 3600 volts um, that they can handle but you want a safety factor so I didn't do the math on you know I got 3600 volts worth of cap but 2600 volts coming out the power supply so I got a pretty good safety ma margin that's probably about 30 percent for somebody that want to do the math for me but anyway not much to the top just a cap board and also originally Drake used some heavy duty bleeders some 50 waters that went across one here and one there and they used them not only for super heavy duty bleeders which is unnecessary because both Drake and this uh, board the bleeders are behind the uh, board across the cap the equalizer resistors and bleeders dual purpose you can see a blue one right there a little flame proof there under the underside of that board so what Drake really used those um, bleeders for they use them for voltage dropping resistors to get bias and during even during standby during operation or standby you turn the amp on them that voltage dropping was kicking in and um, it was sucking out 60 watts of heat even in standby you turn on the 
the amp, the uh, bleeders, and the voltage dropping thing kick in and 60 watts of heat was always happening in this power supply and of course you know with the covers on and all that there's no fan so um, it was a heat monster just from those bleeders and that's the way most amps uh, manufacturers got cut off bias back then uh, you know 50 years ago I believe this amp was made in the 70s um, they dropped some of the voltage off the high voltage which you know when you drop voltage like that it's a lot of heat involved um, and modern thinking you don't do that you put a resistor in the cathode of the tubes which you know doesn't really draw power it's almost a ground potential there anyway and actually you're raising it above ground so um, uh, very little power being drawn and it's just as effective if not more at cutting off the tubes and you're not wasting power from the high voltage that's 60 watts instead of going up in heat to get the um, cutoff bias can now go toward the output so it makes it a uh, cooler cooler running and a little bit higher output um, power supply just by going with the uh, modern way of doing things instead of the old-fashioned way of doing things um, just because people did it for a long time and 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 just because it worked doesn't mean it's the best way to do things you know modern tech technology has improves people figure out a better way to do things um, I got a pinball machine I used to be in the pinball big time and um, to say this back in the pinball days this is the plunger off a flipper uh, from a pinball machine and the coil pulls this in and it hits against the backstop metal backstop on a pinball and that's what makes the um, flipper uh, kick in on a pinball machine and the reason I'm showing this is for for decades um, the plunger looked just like this it was shaped like this right and what happens is when this thing is uh, kicking the bottom of that backstop when it's kicked in, you know, thousands of times with that flipper being flipped and it's hitting the metal backstop thousands of times, right? This uh, end here would mushroom out. And it's a little sleeve that this went through and when it mushroom out, it would, you know, stick in the, um, in the sleeve in the coil of the flipper because that end takes a beating and it was mushrooms out. So... Uh, you would replace it or you would get a grinder and you would grind out the mushroom at the end and then you know people started thinking even including me and you know and all them it's like hey why don't we just grind this end down some like uh, a bullet shape or a little bit of a conical shape to give it some room so when it mushrooms out uh, it won't be um, um, getting caught in the cylinder you know because if you grind that down some you know at an angle then when it mushrooms out you can keep on going no problem so you know we started doing that for years and then you know some years later um, after you know having it like this for many 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 decades the manufacturers started uh, making that cylindrical too so when it mushrooms out you can keep on going and I only say that is to say just because somebody did something for years that is, doesn't mean it's the best way to do it I remember reading that um, when doctors did back surgery and they put in a uh, metal rod in your back, they would, you know, drill the hole in the spine and then tap it in there, you know, with a small tap hammer. And uh, they did it for years because, you know, that's the way they did it, right? And then somebody said, hey, why don't we uh, 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 drill it in instead of tapping it in because that tapping on your spinal cord caused you know almost as much damage as you know what your original problem was um, to tap it your, your spinal cord didn't like that tapping so anyway uh, they got smart and they started um, 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 drilling it in or screwing it in um, and that made it much much better and there you know once you figure it out it's like aha you know we should have been doing this from the beginning so I just say that just because somebody do something doesn't make it the best way but not a lot up here and then underneath not a lot two power supplies instead of having a bunch of diodes in a string this is already done not my mod but anyway uh 
these are two block diodes and all they are is a bunch of diodes in one package I think this is uh, 10 kilovolts at uh, 1 amp each um, for that and it's a voltage doubler scheme and then just your terminal strip for 110, 220 um, also your circuit breakers for safety um, and that's about it to this thing oh over here was another uh, dropping resistor that was tied into those other ones the big ones up there and then this one was a lower ohm or lower resistance and since I'm not using that dropping voltage I decided to just leave it in there um, you know just if somebody wants to you know get it and mod it back it makes it a little bit easier for them but that's not used at all anymore and also Drake did a little interesting thing to get the high voltage and the low voltage um, on the transformer that they did it on the input side you know you got um, four coils on the input side so you can change from 110 to 220 you know using jumpers if you see the red and the green there but also to go from SSB to CW which is basically high and low on the amp it changes the taps some of the taps on the transformer on the input side from um, series to parallel and that's how they make a high and low um, for the high voltage on it. A little bit interesting design um, but again this ain't no heat kit. I, I like this amp a lot and I think that's about all I wanted to go through today the um, Drake L7 or L4 power supply before we uh, put it all back together and uh, get her going with the uh, Drake L7. Alright, that's going to be it for this one. Bye.